And we turn now to the chairman of the National Republican Congressional Committee, Minnesota Congressman Tom Emmer. Good morning. Good to have you here in person. Um, I have to ask you about what we've just been talking about here. How concerned are you about the risk of political violence and, and how should it be minimized? Uh, there's no place for violence, period, in our society. Physical violence or violence against someone's property. I think uh, you've already covered that here this morning. The uh, incident in uh, San Francisco, tragic as it is, I think we need some more information about it, but uh, we should all be feeling for Paul Pelosi and his family. Hopefully, there'll be 100 percent recovery. And just to be abundantly clear, you denounce any kind of attack on the Pelosi family. Absolutely. Uh, it, there should be no attacks, period. There should be no violence in our society. Again, whether it's political or otherwise, there's no place for it in a civilized mm -hmm. society. Well, um, I'm glad you said that because I want to ask you about something in our CBS News poll that shows that even as Republicans are poised to lead this contest and, and take control of the House, we see suspicion, specifically among Republicans, about the voting process. Um, a big majority of Republicans support the idea of private citizens challenging election officials as they process and report vote counts on election night. We're seeing that on the screen now. Two thirds of Republicans support the idea of private citizens patrolling around ballot drop boxes and polling places. This is just Republicans. We don't see this with Democrats. We do not see this with independents. Would you urge private citizens not to patrol polling places. Well, you, you picked the words, Margaret. I would say that it is Republicans, Democrats, independents, all American citizens are very acutely aware, as your previous guest just mentioned, about our election process. I think this is going to be a very good election because people are awake, they're paying attention. Mm -hmm. uh, they should volunteer as poll watchers. It, it's a state-based system. Whatever your state requires and allows, mm -hmm. you should definitely be involved. And I think it's going to help the process. And just to be abundantly clear, Poll watching is different than voter intimidation, which is unlawful. Uh, nobody should be intimidated when they're exercising their most precious right to vote. So when you see video, as we have seen in a place like in Arizona, where you see individuals with tactical gear, where you see individuals with weapons outside drop boxes, where, how do you classify that? I, again, no one should feel intimidated when they're exercising their right to that vote. That is intimidating. You, you've got, you've got uh, stories on both sides of the aisle. You've got stories in many different states about how people have felt as though their right was infringed on. I think cooler heads need to prevail. Yeah. I really think we're going to have a good election. I, I think you've got 15 million plus that have already participated in early voting across this country. I think you're going to have a big turnout in nine days from now on the election. And I think, again, Republicans, Democrats, and others are well aware of the issues that we had during COVID. People were stepping up and trying to do things to make sure we were protected and safe, but they were adjusting election laws on the fly. I think a lot of that has been resolved. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see a really good uh, experience in nine days. Okay. So you would urge citizens not to patrol polling places? Again, I urge everyone, get involved. Okay. Whatever your state but, allows, get involved. I Volunteer. Mean, exactly what your, okay. your previous guest said. Because I Be want to ask, I want to ask you, because in this bulletin, it also talks about um, a linkage in drawing uh, and, and undermining confidence in elections because of 2020. And you are on this list that we have of 307 Republicans running for office who have raised doubts about the integrity of the election. I mean, they're, they're drawing a direct line here between sowing distrust then and what we are seeing right now. Do you regret sowing doubts yourself? I, what you're referring to, I've never sowed doubts about the election. I have definitely You signed on questions. to this Texas amicus brief Let's that went to the Supreme that. Court to what overturn it. What it said it. was, Margaret, what that, uh, what that said, that amicus brief, is that a lot of people, uh, governors, attorneys general, secretaries of state, took unilateral action during COVID, changing yeah. election so, laws so you themselves. Don't regret again, if these... I could finish, changing election laws themselves to try and make sure that we were safe while we exercised our right to vote. That particular amicus brief, all it said was that we need to reaffirm that state legislatures and legislatures mm -hmm. alone make their election laws. So as we go forward, once we're out of COVID, so we you, have to go back to that. So to be clear, you don't consider yourself an election denier? Absolutely not. And Joe Biden is the legitimately 
we, elected we, president of the United he, States of America. He has been sworn. He's serving. He is the president of the United States. He is the president of the United and States. And we've got an election in nine by. days. We've got an election in nine days that we've been working on for the last yeah. two years. Uh, you reported in the ent intro that eight out of ten Americans in that same poll that you're referring to yeah. are concerned with where this country is. They say it's out of right, control. Right, you're not undermining. If you look, you're not eight out meaning of 10, to undermine confidence in the 2020 election. Eight, eight out of ten Americans here. right now think we're on the wrong track. That's what they're going to be voting. I know, on and days. I would love to talk about something other than people being worried for their lives. But unfortunately, that's where we are. I want to ask you about this when it comes to political violence. On your Twitter feed, you posted this video we're going to show just a few days ago where you're firing a gun and it says, enjoyed exercising my Second Amendment rights. Hashtag fire Pelosi. Why is there a gun in a political ad at all? It wasn't an ad. Hashtag I was, I was or a tweeting tweet. Out, I was tweeting out Hashtag something that I just done. Hashtag fire Pelosi with a weapon. Well, now wouldn't you're, a pink slip be more fitting if it's about firing her? It's interesting, Margaret. Why a gun? It's interesting, Margaret, that we're talking about this this morning. When a couple of years back, when a Bernie Sanders supporter shot Steve Scalise, which was horrendous when a Bernie and horrific, Sanders supporter which is shot why we Steve should Scalise, be not I never heard you weapons. or anyone else in the media trying to blame Democrats for what happened. We need to stay we focused on what we're all doing. We did extensive coverage of what happened to Ex Steve Scalise. Me? There is extensive Nobody news Nobody tried sir. to equate Democrats' rhetoric, people that I'm not say, talking about your rhetoric. I'm talking about what you posted. You're shooting same. a gun. Our viewers just saw it. Yeah, right. Hashtag fire Pelosi. Exercising our Second Amendment rights, having That's fun That's not a debate about the Second Amendment. Yeah. That's not a debate about the Second Amendment. Hashtag yes, fire Pelosi. Yes, it is. I, I'm, Do you I'm running not the campaign understand that that is suggestive to people who are in a bad state and in this current environment, how risky it is? As you're talking well, I, about the importance of lowering the rhetoric. I disagree with Why you. Why do you leave that up? Again, I never saw anyone after Steve Scalise was shot by a I'm Bernie Sanders about right supporter now, trying to equate, is happening equate Democrat now. rhetoric with those actions. Please don't do that. that no, okay. Looking at your candidates, Republican candidates have spent more than $116 million on ads that mention Speaker Pelosi by name in this cycle. If this is about the issues, why don't you make it about the issues? Why not depersonalize it? It is absolutely about the issues. It's about the fact that we have double-digit inflation, don't exploding, think... exploding cost of living. We've got a crime wave across this country that is In the direct moment, result. We are eight that is the direct days result. out. Don't you think this needs to change? Why not Again. pull some of these ads? Why not just delete your well, tweet? I'm sure, I'm sure people like to talk about anything but what the Democrats have done to this country, which, quite frankly, is exploding cost of living, a crime wave in our major cities that is the result of this defund the police nonsense and cashless bail. I mean, you look at New York City, where you put someone in jail at 9 p.m. for uh, assaulting someone on the street, and they're back out on the street at 9 a.m. committing crimes again. You look at my uh, uh, state of Minnesota, Minneapolis it's has 6,000 assaults since the beginning of the year, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Those are the issues that are top of mind for every voter in this country. Yeah. That's why they're going to show up in on, the, uh, on November 8th, and mm -hmm. that's why Republicans are going to win in the midterms. That's what our projections are showing. But I would suggest more pink slips, fewer weapons in our ads in this environment. Sir, thank you for joining us.